Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to this Let's Play Sekiro Intermission. We have a lot to do today. This is all stuff that really doesn't fit neatly into the main playthrough or it involves a lot of backtracking. Who or what did this to you? Large ape on my neck. Uh, my neck. <laughs> a large ape sounds like what we fought at the end of the last video. And in fact, oh, there's a reason why this room was so suspiciously huge the last time we came here. Huge and empty. This one starts off in phase two immediately. So we're going to do a few optional fights today, like this one, that I've been saving up for a rainy day. We're going to get some stuff that I just flat out missed. Uh, we're gonna cure dragon rot. We're gonna advance some side quests. We are going to get a lot of NPC dialogue. You know, kind of odds and ends stuff that didn't flow well in the main playthrough. I'm gonna timestamp everything in the description, so if you're looking for something specific, you can jump to it. Also, this is all gonna be post commentary instead of the usual live commentary I do. Uh, because there's going to be so much going on, and there's going to be so much jumping around and cutting. And in fact, I recorded about three hours of footage, which, looking at the timeline now, I might still have some editing to do. It's going to be... Oh, I haven't done the... I haven't edited the footage from the end. This should be about 45 to 50 minutes-ish long. So, rather than doing three hours of live commentary and just a whole lot of... Hmm. Nonsense. Just don't post commentary. So first, we're revisiting the bottom of the swamp in the Ashina Depths. The reason that I chose to do this intermission now is because the last boss that we did, the Guardian Ape, leads to a few things unlocking like this. And as soon as we pick back up and get the Lotus of the Palace that he was guarding, we'll trigger the next phase of the game's critical path. So now is the perfect time to do all this stuff. Uh, this, yeah, again, this is the reason we had that huge boss arena. So we can refight a different ape. Different apes. And in the main playthrough, when we get back to that, I'll talk about the lore of them because there's, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, the fight is essentially your Ornstein and Smo. And I like how they each represent two different phases of the Guardian Ape fight. Uh, the one who jumps in second is actually the ape in the first phase, you know, the monkey phase. And then the one that you start with, with the two health bars, is always in that boss's phase two. This is a really tricky and difficult fight. They overlap their attack patterns really hard, and they all give you a lot of time to get damage in. But once you just get one of them out of the way, cleaning up the remaining one is not that hard. It's not like they go Super Ornstein and Super Smo and you get a combined move set or a souped up move set or anything. It's just that when they're together, it it makes the arena feel claustrophobic despite being so cavernous. That and all the overlapping, and you don't get anything like the way character action games like Devil May Cry handle multiple enemies on screen. Where it, as long as you're angling the camera away and keeping them off camera, their AI becomes less aggressive. FromSoft doesn't really do that. So even if they are off screen, they're still going to be attacking you. In fact, it behooves you to do the exact opposite in something like Sekiro compared to DMC5 and make sure that you can always see as much as possible at all times so you're never just caught completely off guard. Aside from that, the same concepts that you learn doing the fight back in um, back in the valley work the same way here. Uh, if you're using the loaded spear, you'd still parry that big overhead slam and pull the centipede out for a lot of posture damage. 
And you can still use the Divine Confetti to get even more bonus damage. You can still take advantage of the even unupgraded Umbrella. And that actually counts as a proper boss fight. It's not just treated like too many bosses. You even get a memory. The Headless Scordian Ape was a colossal beast plagued with the power of the Undying. Plagued with the power of the Undying. And that's four beads. Five. But hey, didn't it seem kind of odd that having just gotten the Mortal Blade, Sekiro did not use it to kill the centipede? Because that, as far as we... Ah, Immortality Severed. That, as far as we know, is the only way to deal with these immortal centipedes. And this is how we get the Bestowal Ninjutsu. So this time, he doesn't make the same mistake twice. He uses the Mortal Blade and kills the centipede and severs the ape's immortality permanently. At one time, the guardian ape shared its den with a mate, but he alone became infested while the other passed away. Now, even the flowers offered in tribute to her passing have withered to dust. Now, I return to Anayama at this point. Actually, no, that's, that's later. This is the memorial mob that I missed way back uh, between the outskirts and the castle near an earlier idol. Uh, I'm going to be returning to Anayama in a second to buy the Phantom Kunai, an upgrade material that he looted from Lady Butterfly after we beat her in the past Harada estate. That's what he was doing lingering around. Care to purchase an offering? Another one. Where you find the departed, you'll find the memorial mob, just like the crows. Go ahead, buy an offering. Also, we'll advance Anayama's side quest uh, in a moment by telling him about the salt. Also, as you can see, we could have bought Robert's firecrackers really early on in the game. <laughs> I've been waiting for you, good sir. I procured some goods with the coin you gave me. Go on, buy something. A kunai used by Lady Butterfly, they can be used to upgrade the loaded shuriken. Ringing sound is heard when the kunai is thrown and phantom butterflies appear in the kunai's trail. Since childhood, Lady Butterfly had accumulated much experience in Usui's forest, far from civilization along Tozen Trail. This forest is filled with mist and mystifications, making it ideal for training in illusion techniques. By the way, good sir, I'm going to let you in on something. All right. I'm thinking about expanding my business. I mean, who knows when Ashina will fall? It's what you might call a uh, sinking ship. <laughs> Opportunity is knocking, you know? Which is why I have a favorite. I actually forgot he made that noise. I was listening to a podcast while I recorded this. What Ashina Samurai want right now? You tell me that. I can sell it to them. You're a shinobi. <laughs> I bet you've got a good ear for gathering information for the enemy. Ah, help a poor merchant out here. Please. <laughs> hey, good sir. I found out what the God samurai God damn. Want. Oh, you mean it, good sir? Yes. It seems they're low on salt. Salt, <laughs> you say? Well, you eat it, of course. But it's also good for purifying the dead and putting on wounds. Diseases spread quick with rotten corpses on the battlefield. Everyone's scrambling for salt. <laughs> that means now's the time to cash in. Lots of people need salt. And karma shouldn't bite me if I sell it for a tad more than the going rate, right? Ah, now that that's decided, it's time to get me some salt. Thank you very much, good sir. And I love Anayama. His voice actor brings so much life and energy to this role. So I just uh, load it back in. Uh, listen here. My salt? Huh? I sold it for quite a pretty price. You know it's a high demand. And that means I'm low 
loaded with cash and product. Look, look, I've got some new items too. Buy something, please. Ah, and this unlocks scrap iron and black gunpowder. Infinite quantities of it. Oh, Another reason why I stopped here when I did. about your business? Ah, you know me so well, good sir. <laughs> it smells like a war's brewing these days. I could make a killing if I take advantage of this. Which is why I have a favor to ask of you, good sir. What is it? Looting battlefields. That's the job. I mean, that's a great way to refresh my stock, right? There are dead bodies all over a battlefield. It's a gold mine, huh? Spears, swords, armor, it's all free and for the taking. Weapons should fly off the shelves thanks to the war preparations. What qualifications do you need? Well, let's see. Looting the battlefield is a dirty, disgusting, and physical job. I'm looking for someone who's big and strong. Thick. <laughs> Greetings. Go on. You can Don't tell his voice actor had such a fun time recording this. Like, being in the booth must have been a blast with him. So then I took some time, I fit some new prosthetic tools, including the finger whistle, and the fan that gives us divine abduction. You can even... Upgrade that to double divine abduction. We'll actually see what that means and what that does uh, near the end of the video. I could not yet use the Phantom Kunai to get that upgrade, but I can't wait for that. It's one of my favorites. It's one I get a lot of use out of. Uh, due to material limits, I couldn't do that. I prioritized the Phoenix Lilac Umbrella because it blocks terror from this boy. The Shichiman Warrior. And it's just in general incredibly strong. Uh, but honestly, these are doable without the Lilac, uh, the Phoenix Lilac Umbrella. Or the anti air death blow that I got from the Black Hat Badger. They help, but not necessary. They just simplify things. And there is also another good reason I saved this Shichiman Warrior. Uh, and we'll see the reason for that later in the video. So a few things. Uh, Phoenix Lilac Umbrella is complete immunity from all of his bullshit, all of his projectiles, and their terror buildup, more importantly. Otherwise, you have to do some fancy footwork. And second, whenever he is in the air, you can anti-air death blow him. However, what I didn't know while recording this is that to anti-air death blow mini bosses, you need divine confetti acting. That's why I keep kind of leaping at him while he floats and getting nothing. I thought I was just not close enough, because to be fair, I do tend to miss the angle most of the time on this. But no, that's not the reason I wasn't getting the, the red marker for the death blow. Again, you need the Divine Confetti to be active on your weapon to anti-air death blow mini-bosses. But, didn't prove to be that much of a problem. These aren't super tough enemies. Uh, they can be a little bit tedious to fight. It's fun for a while just weaving and, and sprinting in and out of these orbs, and then it just gets old. They actually have, like, way too much health. Uh, for mini-bosses. For mini-bosses that don't do all that much. It does, however, have a second phase, but that second phase doesn't change him up enough. It just adds one really cool attack. And for beating him, uh, we're gonna get something that kind of acts I think I described this before, like how you would generate extra Quicksilver bullets in Bloodborne. You would make them out of blood. Except this lets you do that for Spirit Emblems. Now at the start of the second phase, he's going to go incorporeal and teleport to the opposite side of the arena to charge up a nice, big, terrifying Kamehameha. And then after that, it's 
almost the same fight. He tends to to hover around in the air a little less often. You have to be careful when he's doing that. You see the ground wreathed in purple flames. And if you're in that zone, terror will build up over time. That's the only thing that's really particularly dangerous. Other than that, it's just... See what I mean about them kind of having too much health and not enough variability? If this phase was significantly different, yeah, I could see that. That'd be pretty fun. Uh, now, I will say it's also my fault for not using Divine Confetti here. Uh, because even without the incentive of ending this quickly with an anti-air death blow, which is how you speed this along substantially, and end my complaints about this being tedious and taking too long, um, it's also kind of my fault for just not using that for the damage boost. But I was thinking, hey, that's it. I was trying to to probe back in my memory and see if there was a deeper justification there, like, oh, I want to conserve my consumables. But no, I don't, I wasn't thinking about that. It was just, I don't feel like wasting it. There's no strategy to it. It's just, no. Nah. Dagger with a stark white blade and hilt. Converts vitality into spirit emblems. Uh, resting replenishes charges. Originally, this tanto was used in a ritual offering to the dragon, in which the emblem would be cut from one's own life force and set adrift on the fountainhead waters. The blade is inscribed with its true name, Devoted Soul. And the other reason why I chose to wait to do the first Shichiman Warrior fight, why I kept passing by that little pit in the abandoned dungeon and saying, I'll save this for later. It wasn't just so I could get the anti-air death blow skill and uh, the whatchamacallit. The Phoenix Lilac Umbrella. It was also so that we could just do both of these in a row. And you can see the only difference now is this one will start off its phase one doing the big beam and the teleports. Other than that, same fight. I didn't manage to land an anti-air death blow, so it's the same fight and we're going to skip some of that. We get the Malcontent Ring, an old ring well suited for slender fingers. Kingfisher is engraved on the underside, can be used to upgrade the finger whistle. Wearing this ring as you blow the finger whistle will create a somber tune. The weeping voice is full of solitude and beauty, possibly somber enough to temporarily quell a voice of rage. Now, another thing that I missed... Oh, I'm sorry, there's one more thing. I keep forgetting the order that I put these clips in. Uh, our last thing to do in this room is to come up here where we once went to get a prayer bead earlier in the LP and find... This... Sad... Orphaned monkey gazing over an ape skeleton. No, we're not going to death blow it. Even if it does attack us. What we will do is get some monkey booze. Two out of three. Bye, sad monkey. We out. Let's look at the, the bones. Okay, now we're out. Now, another thing that I missed, uh, this one being more recent, is that there is a reason to fight this horde of monkeys. Uh, the monkeys that were prior to the Guardian 8 fight. It's because once you beat them all, you get the final monkey booze! Uh, next, I'm going to explain what will happen, and then just let the NPCs talk for a bit. Uh, commentary will pick up back up after the bulk of the talking stops. I'm going to cure a dragon rot by getting a blood sample from the memorial mob near the dungeon, then take it back to Emma to analyze. Uh, she... I Oh, we also got some important dialogue from her from when I eavesdropped on Kuro earlier in the LP. You do some zoning in and out, and you can use the dragon blood droplets now to cure the dragon rot at idols, 
from here on. Then a lot of characters are going to get very drunk and give us flavor dialogue thanks to various types of sake, including the monkey booze. So again, that's timestamped in the description. I'll be back once the talking is done. You've caught it too. I must make an offering. I'm taking a blood sample. <laughs> I want to bring this to Lady Emma. I must do what must be done. Mm -hmm. That is what the Divine Heir said. He must be hiding something. I see. Uh, what is it? Lord Takeru spoke of beheading in his memoirs. Yes. Perhaps the act of beheading was the means to end immortality, along with the life of the Divine Heir. What? If you walk the path of immortal severance, then you must use the mortal blade to... End my lord's life. Yes. Lord Kuro desires immortal severance. I understand that. I do. And yet, Master Wolf, might there be a path where Lord Kuro need not lose his life? The dragon's heritage is no ordinary power. There could be such a path. Well then, Master Wolf, I ask that you help me find such a path. A path where Lord Kuro need not die. I will not let my lord die. Thank you. We must find a starting point. Yes. <sighs> oh, yes. Lady Tomoy's. Master Wolf, I might have a place to start. I'll look into it and let you know as soon as I find something. Thank you. Also, we may want to... Keep this from the Divine Heir. Yes. Master Wolf, I might all look into it, and- Thank you. Also- Keep this. Yes. I've obtained one. A blood sample. Let me see. The coloration is very similar to the sculptor's. The color is just slightly tainted. But what's this? Hmm. Do you have enough blood? I believe so. Allow me to continue my research into the dragon rot. When we speak again, it's likely I'll have made a breakthrough. In fact, count on it. I can know when we, in fact, goodbye. I've been waiting for you. Any progress? Yes. I've found some answers. The source of the dragon rot is the stagnation in your blood. What causes the stagnation? The blood has only a limited amount of power available to it. Let's say you've used all of this power, and then you attempt to resurrect again. The resurrection still occurs, but it must draw on power from another source. From those that have the dragon rod? I believe so. For those who have the dragon rod, the natural life force that everyone has, that allows them to live their lives and function as human beings, has been taken from them. Their blood has stagnated. Can it be cured? Yes. By giving back what has been taken. Here you are. Master Wolf, I'll look at all keep yes. Goodbye.
You're here. The Divine... You saved him. That has nothing to do with me. It does. You have my thanks. Hmm. The shadow in your eyes. It's become a shade lighter. What? No matter. So, you need something? <sighs> I'm parched. Could use a cup of tea. Hmm. Another towel? It seems the sculptor's dragon rot has been cured. Yes. Please, give this to him. What is it? It's his favorite tea. I thought it would be a fitting way to celebrate his return to health. I brought tea. <laughs> Did you now? Quite the busybody, aren't you? some tea. Mm, this tea smells pretty good. Suppose I'll have some. Oh, I needed that. This tea reminds me of Emma's father. About Lady Emma's father? Dogen. He was an extraordinary doctor. He was also very well versed in mechanisms and devices. Better put, he was obsessed with mechanisms to the point that it affected his health. He didn't take much else seriously, but I owed him my life. Uh, and we could say that you owe him your life as well. What do you mean? When I lost my left arm, Dogen created that thing, which has now become your left arm. The first version was a complete failure, didn't work at all, so he remade it. Then he remade it again and again countless times. <laughs> What? He told me I needed to practice with the prosthetic in order to use it properly. So Emma would pester me into carving her spinning tops and other toys. After much training of that sort, it came to be called a shinobi fang. In other words, that prosthetic arm is Dogen's legacy. His legacy? So much time has passed. While I have abandoned my shinobi ways, that alone I could not bear to abandon. Another time, I'll lend you. What's that you, where did you get that finger? The guardian ape of the sunken valley. I found it in his belly. I see. To think it was in the belly of an ape. Let me see it. I'll fix it to you. I brought something for you. Monkey booze, is it? Mm. Oh, it burns the throat, same as ever. This really brings back memories. Did you drink this often? I trained in the techniques of the Shinobi, in the valley where the monkeys dwelled. By yourself? No, there were two of us. We were rogue Shinobi. There was no proper master for the likes of us. That's why we went to the valley. To run, to jump, to clash swords. Where one slip would mean your doom. That was how we trained. We came to move exactly as monkeys did after a time. <laughs> I'd drink this monkey booze whenever I tired of training. And I'd listen to the howl of my partner's whistling finger while I drank. Howl? It was from his unique ring. Whistling through that ring would fill the valley with a somber melody. Strangely enough, I enjoyed that sound. I listened to it so often. Another howl and... Master Wolf, I'll look at... Thank you. Also. Keep this. Yes. Here. Oh, this is... <laughs> this is... monkey booze. Something wrong? Well, let me try it. Oh, it... it burns so bad. Let's see. Yes, monkeys. I 
seem to have a strong connection with monkeys. You do? Yes. I was rescued by a monkey, after all. <sighs> you don't believe me, do you? When I was young, I stood alone in the aftermath of a battlefield. I was alone and staring, dumbfounded. I could do nothing, neither cry nor even get angry. Complete shock, and then there was a monkey eating a rice ball. A monkey? Maybe an ape? Maybe. Either way, he made it look so delicious. I remember being angry at that, but then, then he gave me the rice ball. It tasted so good. What a kind monkey. <laughs> yes. He was a very kind monkey. Goodbye. Sekiro, is that the mortal blade? So what of the rulers? According to the Divine Child of the Inner Sanctum, anyone who draws the mortal blade will meet death. Which means only one such as you can wield it then. When I drew out the blade and saw its crimson edge, I too died once. I see. The crimson edge. Listen, Sekiro. With the mortal blade, you can now kill the undying. A truly terrifying weapon, don't you think? What are you trying to say? That sword is now yours. Who or what will you kill? You must be sure of the answer before drawing it. I have something for you. Ah, Sekiro. You know me well. Why, this isn't monkey booze. <laughs> so this is what it's like to breathe fire. Do you know what other name Nisake goes by? I don't. You don't? They call it Shura's Wine. They killed one once long ago. Shura. Or something very much like it. What is Shura, exactly? Those who go on killing will eventually become Shura. They don't even remember why. Simply enraptured. They kill solely for the joy it brings them. I see it in your eyes, too. The shadow of Shura. Hmm. Give me cause, and I will kill you. It would do you well to remember that. I see. Alright, next I'm gonna finally invest five skill points into the Ashina Cross at the end of the Ashina Art skill tree. I don't really care for the move itself, but it's just so we can see the Tengu again and get our reward from him for learning a secret technique. Have you mastered any secret techniques? Yes. Yes. It seems you have. Sekiro, you really have a knack for killing. Wonderful. Here's your reward. Take it. Forceful. The Mushin text. Young Ishin would stop at nothing in his lust for power in this single-minded search for strength ended him taking Ashina for his own. This is the result of combining techniques from the styles he encountered. This drive to find Ishin's achievements and as such, this text will never be finished. Sekiro, I know you. <laughs> Limitless ambition. Are, are you alright? <clears throat> I'll enjoy the air up here for a little while longer. Go, Sekiro. You get a little bit of foreshadowing there, too, about the price of that limitless ambition. Now I just visit a few merchants, including the Pot Noble and Hirana, to get this mask fragment for carp scales. The right side of the mask fragment of an old dancer's mask. The original must have been broken into several pieces. This fragment appears to be the right side. And also this move, which I don't really use that much. The combat art floating passage. But hey, we had the scales for it. May as well. Back in the dilapidated temple, I think I just purchased a gourd seed from Fujioka, but I wanted to show it so nobody got confused about why I suddenly have extra charges on my gourd. And the Sabimaru 
memo, the Three Pagoda and the other one. They're just hints about where things are, so didn't feel the need to show that. Shinobi of the divine to buy them, I mean. You are well Shinobi of the Divine Air. This time the rice grew well. Now, hold out your hand. Please. Bless us with bountiful harvest. Now we harvest more rice from the Divine rice Child. Is very precious. Please come again, should you want for more. So you have to consume Farewell, your current rice and then zone out and back in before the next harvest will be ready. We'll give this rice to the other hag. This one, it's all the fresh one is over there. Over the cliff. It's back. Hmm? Right, right. If some less. Here's some rice. Oh, there's no doubt. This is the Divine Child's rice. Oh, thank heavens. Thank heavens. Tell me, what do you see? Mm. I hate the gross eating noises. More cryptic clues, but we'll piece together exactly what she means in the main playthrough. By the way, if you use prayer items like Mebo balloons around the hags, you get this. Yes, that's the way. That's how one prays. You have a pious temperament. I offer this to you. Yes, yes. Pray as much as you please. Such a good, pious temperament. I offer this to you. Yes, very good. What devotion. Lastly, I offer this to you. And this is the final thing you can get, which is divine a confetti. like you could stand with the divine child. Those monk scoundrels always chase me away. <laughs> oh, divine child. So we're going to keep repeating the process of getting rice until they get tired and then sick. And once they're sick, they need a persimmon dropped from monkeys. You've come, Shinobi of the Divine Air. What's wrong? It is nothing serious. More importantly, your rice. Hold on, you don't look well. Rest. Yes, I understand. What can I do? What? Is there something I can get you? Well, then, then I'd like to eat a persimmon. All right. I found a persimmon. Truly? You brought me a persimmon? Eat. Yes. Thank you. It's sweet and delicious. Good. Shinobi, hold out your hand. But no need to hesitate. Hold out your hand. This will result Bountiful in harvest for you. Oh, no, just regular rice this time. Shinobi of the divine air. The crop is plentiful. Thanks to the persimmon you gave me. I ask that you also give some to the divine air of the dragon's heritage. I will. There it is. Rice that has spilled forth from the hand of the Divine Child of Rejuvenation intended to be a gift for Kuro. Rice is precious. I want nothing more than for the Divine Heir of the Dragon's Heritage to get better. Kuro would likely be pleased to receive it. 
So you keep repeating the process enough, and eventually you get rice prokuro, which is super important. <laughs> then I have to find the... Where could it be? Is this what you're looking for? Uh, that's a red and white flower. I'm looking for a pure white flower. I see. But you... You're trying to help. Thank you. You're a good man. Aww. Pure white flower. Mm. Mm. Yes. It flew away. Yes, that's right. The pure white flower flew away. So let's send him to the abandoned dungeon. To the abandoned dungeon of Hushin Castle. Huh? Abandoned dungeon? Yes. My daddy is there. What? Yeah. He did something bad. But he wasn't taken to a cell like you normally would. Uh, they took him to a place that was damp, like a dirt cellar. <laughs> I see. Right. I'll go to the abandoned dungeon, just like you suggested. I mean, maybe I'll be able to meet my daddy. <laughs> you really are a good man. I see. I'll go to th I'm Lastly, we're going to do all three endings of Kitaro's questline. You may have noticed there's a little cranny in the dungeon that I didn't explore earlier in the playthrough. Running prisoners know a note left behind by a dead and rotting man in the abandoned dungeon. Supposedly, the fragrant stone is enshrined in a village in the Ashina Depths, but how to interpret throw oneself? This is as far as the old Okami tome could take me, but did they truly reach the Fountainhead Palace? I'd like to know, but it seems I never will. Kotaro, forgive me. Oh. Fuck. So, for the first and probably most heartbreaking ending for Kotaro's questline, you have to give him the red and white pinwheel. Uh, which is not the one he wanted, remember. He wanted the pure white one. And then send him to the abandoned dungeon to see Dosaku and Dojin. Well, he's alive. You can see him breathing. My dear Shinobi, I thank you for dutifully completing your task. At this moment, the person in question is in the surgery facility of the abandoned dungeon. Our trials can now move forward. I'm sure the master will be pleased. I offer this as my thanks. Please, take it. No, it's just a lump of fat wax. It's about time I embark for the facility as well. You have performed your role most admirably. My master and I now have work we must complete. It's about you and my... So just keep resting at the sculptor's idol and coming back and forth after each new step in the chain to advance it. How is the progress, Master Dosaku? Dojun! Hmm? Ah, of course. Master, I'll be sure to give clear, detailed instructions. My dear Shinobi, this is not proper. You cannot simply enter this facility as you please without notification. Please, take your leave. My dear Shinobi, please. Human. Not anymore. <clears throat> ah, my dear Shinobi. What's wrong? It's nothing for you from the Master.
We request your assistance once again. Ah, my dear Shinobi, did you bring what we requested? Yes. Indeed, you have obtained it. With this, the treatment can be advanced. I'm sure the Master will be ecstatic, even if I am not. Try as I might, I'm unable to muster the same level of enthusiasm. Tojun, you novice. <laughs> ah, fret not, dear Shinobi. I will perform my duty for the glory of Ashina. Your reward, dear Shinobi. Please accept it with our thanks. With this, we must... Master Dosaku, what on earth? What? Surely you don't intend to use that on me. Very astute, my apprentice. You are the next subject. Please, no! As I feared, you have strayed from the path of medicine. Why would you do such a thing? No, Master. The rejuvenating waters have bewitched you. Master, please answer me. Please answer me, Master. Why? Why would you answer me? Answer me, Dosaku! Dosaku! Please answer me, Master. Why? Why would you answer me? Answer me, Dosaku! Answer me, Dosaku. Why? Why won't you answer me, Dosaku? Dosaku. Dosaku. Eventually, they both vanish. First, Kataro, and then Dojin. Swim through the waterway and through one of the branching paths. I think I got it on the first try. It's right at the cage, or a right at the cage. Or was it? No, I fucked up. Eventually, you'll find your way to a dead end where red eyed Kotaru wielding a giant bell and red-eyed doujin are waiting for you to fight fighting them both together on this really small little outcropping with this awkward terrain uh it's kind of tough to be honest they don't have normal enemy health either. They have mini boss health despite having normal enemy move sets. But if you choose to do things this way, this is unfortunately how things go for Katara. I feel like we've kind of seen this story before in uh in other Miyazaki games. Luckily, there are two other endings for Kataro's quest. Uh, this is by far the worst one. So it'll, it, it's all uphill from here. We'll do the other one, starting from the beginning, after dispatching these two. So I think, eventually, I just started playing this way more patiently, which is the only thing you can really afford to do. Doesn't stop me from taking those stray hits. Just spent a lot of time learning to respect the bell. And just getting the hits in when I can. And also falling off the ledge into the water a lot, because you don't have a lot of surface area to work with and dodge around. Plus you get this, 
And look how far forward the consecutive grabs take him. He can cover the whole arena, so you really have to watch out. I mean, he can he can cover distance really efficiently. Is known as this is our second dual fight of this intermission alone. Despite there not actually being that many in the game total. These very well may as well be mini bosses, considering their health and damage output. I feel like they probably could have stood to have given them unique move sets, but then again, this it, it probably wouldn't be very resource or time efficient to put that much effort into these two enemies. that you might not even fight without a series of things happening. Like, a series of things going right. And it's not like they're huge, important story uh, characters. By the way, I, you can get away with just fighting one of them at a time. Uh, when Kataru disappears from the facility, which is that back room of the dungeon, uh, this is where he goes. So you can go and advance it enough for Kataru to move here with the red eyes, uh, come and kill him, and then advance the rest of Dojin's part, and then fight Dojin 1v1 as well. But, hey, this is more fun and hectic, and also I sort of just forgot that while I was recording this footage. <laughs> Aww. But there is a special thing that we get, an Academics Red Lump, which is normal Red Lump, except it has some new lore slash flavor text on it. It just takes forever to find, and I was looking in the wrong place. Occupy is the same quick item uh, category. A round red lump found inside the body of a red-eyed doujin. Consumed to gain red eyes and reduce flinching from enemy attacks. Also prohibits use of resurrection. Dosaku and doujin were the quintessential master and disciple. Often, when pursuing the ideal self, one need only look within. The second ending for Kitaro is much happier. You give him the pure white flower that he wants. Is this the pure white flower? Oh, oh, that's... Oh, I remember now, everyone. They are children of the rejuvenating waters. And... Everyone, remember? I remember, I tried to find a pure white pinwheel? A pinwheel? For that child? Hey! Can I ask a favor? What? Could you spirit me away? I don't follow. I know about you. You're a shinobi, right? Those monks say. Shinobi can spirit people away. Make them disappear as if they were never there. Why do you want that? Well, I'm sure that everyone will be wherever I disappear to. And then I'll get to see them. I'm in charge of looking after the children, after all. You can do that. All right. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm ready. But also a little frightened. But yes, do it. So this is going to be for the good ending to his quest, I'd say. You give him what he wants, and then you use your divine abduction ability. And he ends up in the Halls of Illusion. Which has the thematic connection with the monkeys, Why, representing the spirits I of the divine children. Here free from distraction. I ask that you leave quietly. Um, no, no, that's not true. That guy, I know he looks a little shifty, 
but he's a good man. Kotaro? Hmm? Oh, it's you! Well, I'm glad you made it. Look, everyone, Mr. Shinobi is here too. Ah, oh, children, greet him properly. <sighs> hmm? Oh, right. Uh, you can't see them, can you? The rejuvenated children? Yes, you can't see them, but they're there. They're adorable kids. Right then, I must give you my thanks. Take this. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> what is it? The kids are saying thank you too. They're so adorable. But just letting him be happy is not practical for our purposes. <laughs> because we need to progress Aniyama's quest and he needs this thick boy. So instead of the dungeon, we send him to Aniyama. There's a peddler named Anayama near Ashina Castle looking for help. You should give him a hand. Um, uh, um, I mean, if everyone comes back, I won't be here, but I am pretty lonely. All right, I'll do it. I'll go and see. You should. <laughs> you really are a good man. And then we can check back in with them. Mr. Shinobi, Hanayama is a good man. He called me here to mourn those who died in battle. We take off the armor, cleanse the body, and make proper graves. Times as they are, decent burials don't happen as much as they should. Hanayama, he called me take time. Good sir, you have one hell of an eye on you. Found me a fine specimen. Oh, not only is he strong, but he doesn't mind looting corpses neither. Thanks to you, I've got piles of weapons and I'm loaded with cash. Not to mention some new items in stock. Here, have a look. Thanks to you, sales are soaring higher than a dragon. Maybe one day soon I'll be the top merchant in all of Ashina. If you're ever in a pinch, I'll hire you in a flash. No. <laughs> oh, you're a hard fish to land, huh? Playing hard to get, I like it. In any case, come again soon. Hanayama, he called me take times and... Greetings. Go on. Until next time, good sir. Come again soon. And we'll pick Aniyama's quest back up once we progress the main story a little bit more. Thank you all for watching this very long, uh, in-depth intermission. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.